Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt with Dragon Sword Gaming. Uh, today we're going to be doing a cap kit on a Sega Game Gear. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, customer says this has a dim picture, so we'll test it out before we go ahead and change out the caps. So I've got a copy of uh, Mortal Kombat 2 here. Uh, let's see. I would say that yes, that is pretty dim. Let's see if we have any audio. Yes, we do. But yeah, that is that is really dim. So, let's change out the caps and see what kind of uh, uh, change that makes for us. So, go ahead and pop out the game. Uh, let me zoom in a little here. Okay, so, move both uh, battery covers. Uh, there is a left and a right, so they're not interchangeable. Then we've got six AA batteries. Uh, these things are notorious for uh, sucking these things up. I think they last about four to six hours, uh, and that is it. So we have uh, six Phillips screws to remove. One, two. Down in the battery compartment is three, four, and five and six. So let's get those out. Okay, so those six removed, and then right here underneath where the cartridge goes is a 4.5 millimeter security bit. And we do have some ribbon cables up here in the top uh, to watch out for. And like that, top and bottom are separated. So I think I'll start with the main board. Uh, this is a VO, VA5. Let's see if we can get this camera. The camera likes to focus and then just lose it. <laughs> uh, but it is a VO, VA5 revision. So let's see. Looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Phillips screws to start with, so let's start with those. So let's remove the two on the side of the cartridge connector. Okay, so let's see if that was it. And it appears so. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm wanting to uh, set this case and all the buttons and stuff aside uh, so I can uh, clean them inside and out. Okay, there's nothing on this side of the board I need to concern myself with. Um, the customer isn't getting a, uh, a replacement backlight or anything like that so we are only concerned with the capacitors on this side so let me set this off to the side and we'll go ahead and get our this is our power and audio PCBs uh, I'm gonna replace the caps on these as well uh, over here we've got some through hole caps on the power side and then on the audio side we have uh, some SMD caps uh, so we need to let's go ahead and remove this shielding ok 
Okay, with those four, we can remove the shielding. Get our other two screws out of there. And then, now that we have that off, I can see we've got one, two Phillips there, and one, two Phillips on that side. So we'll go ahead and move those. There we go. And that's actually attached to this PCB. Just had some kind of tape residue that was actually holding that down to the back side of that battery compartment. And there we go. Now we can uh, uh, get this cleaned up as well. So I think to start with, now that we have all the PCBs out, uh, we've got our main VA5 board. We've got our audio PCB and our power PCB. Uh, I believe I'm going to start with the uh, VA5, so let's do that. Okay, now that I got us a uh, closer up view, we will begin removing the capacitors. I'm using my uh, reflow station set at a low heat to start with, and then I'll uh, I'll bump it up as I need to. Um, and I'm hoping this will uh, uh, heat up the glue underneath these uh, capacitors as well to make them uh, break free from the board easier uh, so we don't have any uh, torn pads or anything like that. So I've got my uh, ESD safe tweezers and my reflow station. Okay, and uh, appears the solder's heated up enough, so I'm just going to try and uh, heat up the rest of the capacitor to try to get that glue to break loose underneath. There we go. It's a nice clean lift. Uh, pads still look great. Uh, so that's the way I'm going to uh, continue to do this. I'll speed the rest of this video up. Okay guys, so that took about, oh, maybe 10-15 minutes uh, and worked pretty well. I ended up having to take my uh, heat up to about 285 degrees Celsius uh, to get these, uh, to heat up the glue that was uh, holding these down as well as keep the, uh, the solder molten to uh, extract those. Uh, but went fine and didn't have any torn pads or anything like that. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just go around this board uh, cleaning up all the uh, pads. I'll be using some, uh, uh, some no clean wick uh, just to clean up all the pads and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so now we'll start cleaning up all these pads to get ready for the uh, new capacitors. Okay, now that we got that, uh, all these uh, pads cleaned up, we'll come back and clean them off with some 90% uh, uh, or higher isopropyl alcohol. Okay, now that we got those pads all cleaned up, uh, we'll go ahead and add us some uh, uh, silver bearing solder to all these uh, pads just to make it easier when we're putting the new capacitors back on. I like to use a little bit of a uh, no clean flux just to make sure that this is making a uh, good contact. And 
and uh, you can see how shiny that is. That that means we're getting uh, a good uh, connection between the solder and the uh, pads. Then I'm gonna switch out this tip. I've got this uh, uh, chisel tip on here. I'm gonna go back to my other one real quick. Okay, now that all the pads have been cleaned up and uh, tinned with new fresh solder, I uh, just want to go over uh, the caps real quick. Uh, all these caps we removed were the uh, old SMD caps uh, that were on here. Uh, the cap kits I use come from Console 5. Luke over at Console 5 does a great job of putting these cap kits together as well as putting together uh, maps and stuff for for all the uh, uh, cap kits. Oh. Uh, so this is the VA5 cap kit. And then also over on his website, he's also got uh, uh, maps, capacitor maps of where all the capacitors go. So that's why I just go through and I pull them all off because I can use uh, uh, the uh, map provided by Luke over at console five. Uh, to put everything back uh, so I, I print these out uh, so this is for the uh, VA5 PCB as well as the uh, power and uh, audio PCBs and then also the uh, uh, map of where everything goes so if I'm looking for C1 I'll find C1 on here which is here which is here and that'll be a 33 microfarad 6 volt uh, capacitor that it, that we're going to use to replace there. So all these are um, electrolytic capacitors uh, that'll be put back into this uh, instead of SMD and that goes for the uh, uh, the power and audio boards as well so I just kind of wanted to go over that real quick. Uh, Luke over at console 5 uh, like I said does a great job with all this stuff uh, and he only sources high quality caps uh, so there's, there's, as far as I'm concerned, there's nobody better uh, for uh, cap, cap kits uh, or even uh, knowledge uh, uh, with everything he's got put together over there. And this is not sponsored by Console Five or anything like that. It's just that that's uh, that's how much I like what uh, Luke over there is uh, doing. So. Anyways, we will um, start putting all these caps back on using that map that I have. I'm not going to go into big detail on that, uh, but I will try to get y'all some close-up shots and uh, and try to uh, uh, show how I'm having to lay these out as well. Uh, just got to make sure when you are putting these caps in, you leave these uh, copper pads uh, open and exposed because they do make contact uh, with the uh, other side of the case when uh, you put that together uh, so you can't have any capacitors in the way of these uh, pads here Okay, so we've got uh, uh, all those capacitors changed out. Uh, I believe everything is, let me see if I can get this camera to focus. Let's see here. I believe everything is out of the way. There we go. Um, made sure to stay out of the way of these uh, uh, copper plates. Uh, everything laid over nice pretty good. Those three contact plates there stayed out of the way of all those. Uh, and so I think everything's going to be fine putting this case back together. So that is the uh, VA5 PCB done. Uh, so now we will go ahead and move over to the um, audio 
uh, PCB as well as the uh, uh, powered PCB. So let's get those knocked out. Okay, we've got the uh, audio PCB finished, uh, removed all the old uh, electrolytic capacitors, uh, didn't have any problems with uh, pulled pads or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I put all the uh, electrolytic capacitors back on, uh, pretty much how the SMD cap set, uh, so they're not taking up any extra space or anything like that. Uh, and then went back and double checked just to make sure that I didn't have any bridge connections uh, underneath. Uh, and everything checked out fine so I like the way this uh, turned out I'm gonna move on to the uh, uh, power PCB I've got three caps on here to remove one two and three these are through holes so this is gonna be a little easier um, and we're just gonna use our uh, got a Heiko FR 300 uh, this thing is worth its weight in gold as far as uh, desoldering goes uh, I, I really do like this thing and recommend this uh, to anyone that is uh, doing this kind of work. If you have to do any any kind of desoldering, uh, I really recommend uh, this FR300. Okay, now that I have a closer shot, uh, we'll get these three uh, removed. Just want to double check and make sure uh, you're desoldering the correct components. So this is the uh, uh, FR300, and we will just take it over that pin, we'll see it heat up, get molten, and there you go, hit the trigger, sucks it right out. There you go, so that is the uh, big capacitor. Those are replaced. Okay, now that we got the capacitors changed out on the uh, VA5 motherboard as well as the power PCB and the audio PCB, just want to go over one thing real quick. I actually had to let me get this camera to focus real quick. Um, actually had to lay over C1 and C2 caps. Uh, they were in the way of the metal shielding. Uh, so I covered the, the legs with some uh, heat shrink tubing uh, and, and laid uh, C2 over this, uh, this chip here and then just got C1 out of the way. You might also make sure to make sure that uh, C7 is leaned over that way uh, just to give yourself a little bit of clearance. I'll show you what, that, what was happening here. So we have this case here. Um, and when you put this audio PCB back in and then you try to get your uh, metal shielding back in, this little arm that comes out over this uh, was in the way and hitting those two caps. Uh, they're just too tall for uh, uh, for replacements for what's there. Uh, so laying them out of the way uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, just make sure that uh, if you do do that, you cover your, uh, uh, your legs with some heat shrink or electrical tape or something like that. Other than that, we're ready to begin assembling this. Uh, so we'll start with this since I've already got it. Got the uh, audio PCB in here. We'll put the power PCB back in. And then we have those four screws. So we'll go ahead and put these four back in. Okay, now that we have those uh, uh, four Phillips screws holding both PCBs in, we can go ahead and put our uh, our shielding back on. 
which has the same uh, four Phillips screws. Okay, now that we have everything put on the bottom uh, half of the shell, uh, we'll set that off to the side, grab our top shell. I actually swapped out uh, uh, the top shell because that other one was busted around this uh, D-pad here. Uh, so I swapped it out for another one that I had laying around the shop that actually had uh, some bad uh, battery uh, damage in there. And that's what you can see some of this blue stuff here. I've gone through and scraped it and cleaned it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, but this this one was a lot better than the one that was on the customer. So I uh, swapped that out for them. Got all our buttons and everything cleaned as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and begin putting all this uh, back in here. Okay, one thing I just noticed I forgot to do was put our uh, uh, our power uh, switch back on top of our button there. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, that's easy enough to fix. Okay, so now we have both halves. Uh, I am replacing the uh, screen on this, or the lens on this as well. I uh, ordered one from console 5. Uh, it's a glass uh, replacement screen. It's supposed to be a lot more uh, scratch resistant and definitely look a lot better than the scratched up one that's on here. Uh, I've already broken this loose uh, to make it easier to do after I put it all back together uh, so I don't risk scratching it. Uh, so the lens will be the last thing I put back on here. So I'm going to go ahead and get our VA5 board here. Uh, also, I'd make sure that uh, your lenses or your uh, LCD screen is nice and clean. I just have a microfiber cloth that uh, works great to get all that uh, little debris and stuff off there. So, okay, just make sure you have your uh, speaker wires routed off to the side there. And drop it in. And then we've got our uh, six Phillips screws to hold that back uh, down in there. So we'll go ahead and get those uh, all put in. Okay, now that we have uh, all six of those uh, Phillips screws put in, securing the VA5 motherboard back to the fr uh, front case, we'll go ahead and hook up our, uh, our ribbon cables again. There we go. Uh, and then one other thing we need to make sure to put back in are these uh, two big ones on the side of the uh, cartridge connector. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll just uh, tuck these wires in down on the side here. And then make sure that you get your, uh, the shielding has two little indentions down here. Uh, just make sure you get those slid back into those spots. Alright, everything is back together. So we'll go ahead and get our one, two, uh, three, four, five, six Phillips screws. And we'll get our one 4.5 security. And there you go. Uh, all the caps have been replaced. Um, I think I will go ahead and uh, uh, change out this screen real quick. I'm not going to go into too much detail with that. Uh, just pry it out and try to get the... Uh, uh, try not to get the uh, uh, the edge of the case uh, too much when you're doing it. I do recommend you actually changing this out uh, before you get to this point. Uh, just so you don't have to uh, uh, fight with this next spot. Let's go ahead and put in our uh, our six double A's and we'll put back on our uh, battery covers so got our copy of Mortal Kombat 2 again and let's see oh yeah that is looking uh, a lot better already let's see if we have some audio oh yeah 
Actually, sounds a little louder too. Yeah, I've got a lot more adjustment in that brightness as well. Uh, but that is looking a hundred times better. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, caps replaced. Um, uh, screen's been replaced as well. 100% uh, working order for the customer. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt with Dragon Sword Gaming. I uh, really hope you liked this video today on the cap replacement on the Sega Game Gear uh, VA5 motherboard revision. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'll have more videos like this in the future. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down in the comments section or you can email me. I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, also, I have a website available for you to check out, uh, dragonswordgaming.com. Uh, I'm offering my uh, mod services as well as uh, repair work uh, and selling uh, retro games, consoles, and accessories. Uh, so if that sounds something like you want to check out, you can go check it out there as well. Uh, it's a brand new website developed by uh, a brand new web development uh, company. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description uh, to get a hold of those guys as well if you're looking to have your own uh, website developed. Uh, they're great guys to work with. Uh, so anyways, that's it guys, and I'll see you next time. Latest.